Hey everybody, it's Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be looking at this really fun tangle. In the middle here I have Ani Flower, which is a really fun tangle that I did this morning. And then I have Verve over here, which is also a really great tangle. It's one I use a lot. I just think it has a great flow to it. Flow is a really big element in my Zen tangles. The last little tangle that I have here, this is Peacock, and I actually taught a class earlier this week with that tangle, and it was a really big hit. So I'm bringing it back in just to refamiliarize my students with it, and for you, maybe introducing you to it. So let's get started by looking at the materials that we're gonna need for class today. We're gonna need a Micron PN pen. If you are a tangler and you do it a lot, you may use an 01 or an 005, whatever fine liner you like, I'm just really partial to the PN. So there's that. And then most of you know that I'm a big fan of the Mono Twin for puddling, which means uh, laying down ink in the Zentangle world. When you have larger spaces, you wanna use something that's a really good puddling pen. This one's great because it has a fine liner on one side and a robust liner on the other side. So you can fill in larger spaces or finer spaces depending on what you need. This is made by Tombow. It's a great pen. You can pick it up on Amazon or Blix uh, or Flax. They all carry it. It's a great pen. Finally, my favorite pen of the class, we're gonna be using the Signo Uniball. I love this white liner. I think it's just the best one on the market. It shows up the best. It's, uh, it's just a really solid pen. The only qualm that I have with it is that sometimes it gets a little temperamental going over color pencils, but that's what scrap paper is for, right? We'll get it started with that. So there you have it. Now finally, for our circle, you're gonna laugh at me. I am not great with using a compass. Um, so I used actually a little cup to make my circle in the middle. So if you've got a glass that you think would work for this project, then go grab that, because you'll be using that. And then we're gonna take that off to the side. And the last and final piece, is a quarter. I used it for the inside of my flower. I told you I don't like using a compass. So there it is, not rocket science here. It's just little ways of helping yourself to draw. So I'm gonna take those things off to the side here and we're gonna get ourselves centered. I like to do a little bit of breathing meditation before we begin. So let's take a moment to do that. So let's take a comfortable seated position, however that works for you inside your body today. And let yourself sit back in your chair. Allow your shoulders to melt away from your ears. Feel your sitting bones making connection with the chair. Feel your feet connecting with the floor. And let's drop into the breath. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's take one more breath right here. And exhale. So we're gonna work with deepening the breath here. Inhaling to the count of four Hold the breath in to the count of four. And on the exhale, exhale to the count of eight. Inhale to the count of four. Hold the breath in for four. And exhale to the count of eight. Inhale for four. Hold the breath in for four and exhale to the count of eight. And now just allow your breath to return back to its natural pace and see if there's a little bit more space for you to breathe. So I want you to make a felt memory inside of your body right now. Notice how relaxed you are in this space. Often when we're practicing Zen Tangle, we may get a little determined and our shoulders might scrunch up towards our ears or we might furrow our brow. Just 
Just take this time to feel inside of your body and notice where you're relaxed. This is the space that we want to practice in. But we can be mindful of our bodies while we're practicing. So you might notice if you hold your breath or if you, you know, do those things that I was talking about earlier. Let's take one more deep breath right here. Let it go with a sigh. And let's tangle. Okay, so let's begin. I'm gonna start with my pencil here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from this corner to this corner and make a diagonal line. You can see that I'm not being too careful. And the other thing is that I'm doing very faintly so that uh, it won't be a part of the tangle later on. So go faintly with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And you can see where those two lines intersect is pretty much where the center of my piece is going to be. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my glass and you can see now why I liked my glass was because it helped me to see where center was going to be for this particular piece. So I'm going to hold on to my glass and I'm just gonna run my pencil all the way around the circumference of the glass here. And you can see that I'm using the bottom of the glass, not the top. And then I'll take that away and there's my circle. And then finally, I'm gonna put my quarter right in the center of my circle. And once I have that, I will go ahead and I will go around the quarter like so, just to get my nice circle in the middle. So you can see I've got my circle in the middle. Now finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go all the way around in the center of the circle. You can see it's almost like I'm halfway through the center of the circle there. And once again, I'm using a very light tension for that. And I'm just freehanding it because remember in Zentangle, we're not worried about perfection here, okay? So once you have that, we're gonna do something that, uh, that I call an overdraw. Now I wanna be very clear with you about this so that you don't end up doing this in your own piece. We are not gonna overdraw that last line that I just did with you, okay? So we're just gonna do this circle and this circle. We're gonna leave this one alone, okay? So I'm gonna turn my tile. I'm left-handed, so I'm turning it off to the right. You may be right-handed and turn it off to the left. Do what works for your hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and overdraw where I put those pencil lines. And you can see I'm going from quadrant to quadrant, just trying to make it easy for my hand here as I move along in the piece. I'm just going around, finishing that up. So there's that part. And then I will go ahead and I will do the quarter And you can see that it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be. Once again, we're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for a guide for our piece. So you remember this line that we were talking about earlier, the one that's the midline. For those of you who have done Zen buttons and those type of things, those lines are very helpful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here right above the quarter and find the midline. Here's the midline right there. And I'm going to draw a circle that's a little bit smaller than a P. There you have it, I'm gonna turn. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. And then I'll turn and I'll do the same thing again. And then I'll finally do one more. Now you'll notice I've got my 12 o'clock and then I've got my three o'clock, I've got my six o'clock and my nine o'clock, right? 
Now I'm gonna go in and do those interim pieces. So I'll go ahead and come in here on those diagonal lines that I created and use those as guides. So you can see I've got this really nice spacing. I've got a lot of space between me and the quarter itself, so the beginning area and then here. There's a lot of nice space. So you wanna make sure that your circles aren't down too low. That's why I was talking about doing that midline all around here as a guide for you. So if you need to take a moment to pause and finish up right here, this is a great place to pause. Okay, so here we go. We are gonna get Ani started here. So most of you have taken classes from me before and you'll know that I'm always looking for ways to make things easier. So here we have this really nice circle right here. I want you to think of sweeping off the top line here and then coming down and connecting. You can see there's that diagonal line right there, that pencil line. So that's gonna help me to, um, to be a guide and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna make this nice and big for you so you can really see what I'm up to here and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around the circle I'm gonna sweep down and then I'm gonna scoop over like so hopefully that was clear I'll turn my tile clockwise and I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna go ahead and sweep down and notice where I'm landing I'm landing almost directly underneath that circle right there can you see that I'm turning my tile once again, I'm coming around, sweeping over, landing right underneath here, turning my tile, coming over and down and landing right underneath, turning my tile, sweeping down and out, landing right underneath that circle right there, coming down and around, down and around, and finally down and around. So it almost looks like a sun, doesn't it? It's almost right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make connection with the lines here. So I'm gonna come into this line right here and see where that halfway point is right there. I'm just gonna put a little dot so I know where I'm going, and then I'm gonna connect to this particular one. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna connect. So now I'm just gonna keep on going clockwise. I find that nice middle point and I connect. Coming right over here, find that middle point and I connect. Turning my tile, find that middle point and connect. So I'm just connecting over and over again until I find my finishing spot. It's a very meditative thing to work in a circle, I find. And you get done a lot faster than you think. So there you have the beginning of our flower here. So this next part is a really fun part and I was you know, playing around with this while I was creating it and I thought that that one of the things that was very helpful was to make a dot over where you're going to land. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for this dot right here. So I'm coming back over here to this particular piece, this one in the top here, and I'm see how I've got this line right here? I'm gonna use that as a guide. Now watch, I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna sweep out, and I'm rounding here, and I'm connecting to that dot. That way I know that I'm right above that circle and I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna turn my tile clockwise. I'll make a dot right above the next circle and then I'll go one circle back. I'm coming up and out and making that line, right? So I'm gonna make a dot right above that circle and then I'll go one circle back coming up and out and connecting with that dot. Making a dot right above that circle, going one circle back here, coming up and out and connecting with that circle. 
make a dot above the circle that you just worked on, go one circle back, come up and out, and connect. Make a dot around the circle that you just worked on, go one circle back, and connect. Make a dot above the circle you just worked on, go one circle back, and connect. Last one right here. Oops, I forgot to make my little dot. There it is. And there we go. So now we really have the beginnings of that piece there. You can see that it's really starting to come alive. Even if you wanted to keep it just like this, it would be a really fun tangle, I think. But since we're in, uh, in the mood to make this flower, we're gonna continue on. So here's that dot that I started with here. I'm gonna let it finish. So I'm gonna come down here to the midpoint of the next line. See this line right here? I'll make a little dot right there and then I'm going to connect it, just like so. I'll turn, make a little line at the midpoint, and I'll connect it. I'm turning, making a little line at the midpoint, and connecting. One more time, make a little line at the midpoint, and connect. I'm going to keep on moving on. Last one right here. Make a little dot and connect. And there you have it. There is Ani flower. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, I think that one turned out pretty good. So I'm happy with the way that turned out. And if you need to take a moment to pause and finish up, this is a great place to do that. All right, so hopefully you've got your Ani flower working for you there. We're gonna do a little bit of embellishment inside of the Ani flower. You can see that I've got these little Vs going around all along the outside of the flower here. I'm just gonna do a little half moon work right here. I'm gonna just make a little half moon inside of that little V. And then if you've got enough room to aura that, you can aura it. And I'm just gonna go around my little piece here and throw a little bit of half moon in there. So it's just a really quick little embellishment for the flower itself. And you can see it's just a little half moon with an aura behind it. Aura in the Zen Tangle world means echoing the line or outlying, outlining the line. Say that 10 times fast. So you can see that this one's a little bit smaller, but I'm just gonna squeeze that in there and get that in there. And it just adds a little definition to the piece, which I think is really fun. So once you have that, we are gonna go ahead and do some puddling. So you're gonna grab your mono twin pen or your puddling pen, whichever one you like. If you don't have a mono twin, you could use an 05, you could use an 08 if you've got it, identipens are good, sharpies are good too if you've got a good fine liner sharpie. Watch out for those sharpies though, they do tend to bleed a little bit, so you wanna be careful. So I'm just gonna grab my more robust side of my liner here, and I'm going to go around my little crescent moons here. So you can see that I'm just very lightly puddling into this, the spaces. So a little trick for you, you wanna go very, very light with your pen. That's how the ink moves much more quickly coming out of the pen. If you press hard on your pen, chances are it's gonna actually reduce the amount of ink that comes out of it. So you can see that's kind of what I've been up to here is I'm just going around and filling in around my crescent moon. So go ahead, pause me here, and when you do, go around and finish up all of your little crescent moons. I'll see you in a minute. 
Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. And one of the things that you might note is that the black actually gives you a chance to kind of clean up your lines a little bit, which is really nice. So now I'm going to take that black and I'm going to bring it into the triangles around the sun here. So you can see that in this particular area, I had a you know a pretty unclean line there, but I wasn't too worried about it when I made it, and I knew that I was gonna have a chance to clean it up, so I'm just gonna go in there and start to fill in that particular spot with that black liner. And then I'm gonna go around to each one of these and fill that in. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my circles here and I'm gonna fill them in as well. So not my crescent moons, but just my circles as well. So I'll just show you where I'm working. So I'm just going into my circles and into my triangles, and I'll be going all the way around those as well. So this is a great place to pause me here and finish up your work, and I'll see you on the other side. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and what fun that is with uh, the black. I just think it's so beautiful and gives it so much gravity. It's a really, really fun tangle to do. So we're gonna let go of that particular piece and let go of our mono twins for right now. And we're gonna jump back in with our microns. So go ahead and grab your micron. And once you have your micron, I want you to remember those pencil lines, those diagonal pencil lines. We're gonna be actually using those for verve. And so what we're gonna do is, right in the middle of that pencil line, you are gonna draw a circle that is about the same size as those circles that you did inside of your ani flower. So a little bit smaller than a pea, okay? So I'm just gonna turn my tile on the diagonal here to make it easier for my hand, and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Now what I'm gonna do with Verve is I'm going to come off the top. See how I have this line right here? I'm gonna come off the top here and I'm gonna swing over, not unlike what we did with Ani Flower. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over right here and I'm gonna swing off the top and I'm gonna go up and over like so. See how that happened? So the top line looks like a six, and the bottom line looks like a nine, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to aura, and I'm gonna do the aura three times. So I've got this line right here. I'm gonna come up this line just a little bit. I'm gonna make a little dot so I know where I'm going, and I'm gonna swing around and I'm gonna aura and land. I'll come up right here, and it may not be that I get to do three one, three auras on this one. I think I'm just gonna do two. So you never know, every time you do a tangle, it's always a different tangle. So if you have room for three, do three, and if you don't, just do two. So now I'm gonna come right here, and I'm gonna make a little dot for myself, and I'm gonna swing up and I'm gonna aura that line right there. So I'm gonna go one and two. That's a really nice verb, that one came out really well. So I'm gonna go down now to the bottom right here. And you can see I'm on that diagonal line. I'm gonna to go to the middle of the diagonal line. I'm gonna make the circle. I wanna make sure that I make this really clear on here for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn my tile to make it easier for my hand. So here it is, I'm back up at the top again, and I'm gonna make that sweeping line that comes off of the top. So I'm just turning and sweeping, and then I'm gonna come from this line and I'm gonna go up and over. So remember, I'm looking for the number six, and then I'm looking for the number nine, okay? So now I'm coming around, I'm making a dot. I'm gonna aura that upper line right here. The last time I started with the nine, this time I'm starting with the six. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. It just is what it is. And then I'll come over here and I'll do the same thing. So I'm just coming around. 
and I'm coming around. So there's our next verve. Now I'm gonna turn to one of the corners that doesn't have it, and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm looking for that pencil line. I'm putting the circle into the center. It's a little bit, uh, or that pen mark in towards the center, and I am making that circle a little bit smaller than a P. Here I go. I'm sweeping off, coming over, and then here I am right here. I'm gonna come up and over, looking for that number six. I'll drop a dot right there, coming up and over, up and over, and once again over here. So there's one verb, and you can see that my pen is running out of ink there. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna turn to the last corner that I have Here's the line, making my circle right in the center of the line, a little bit smaller than a P. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to come off of this, making that nine, and then I'm gonna come over here. And there's the six, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and aura one, and two, and then I'll come over here and I'll make my line one and two. So there is Verve. If you need to take a moment and finish up on your own, this is a great place to do that. Well, all right, so this piece is really moving along here. We've really got some nice flow going here and it feels like we're ready to move on to our really fun peacock tangle here. So I like to aura a lot. I like to use the lines that are already present in the tangle to create flow in the piece. So you can see that I'm right here in this corner. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. So I'm right here in this corner and I'm, I'm gonna follow the flow of this line right here. So I'm gonna come up and out and then watch, I'm going to veer up into this corner right there. See how I've got all that really nice space in there? That's where I'm gonna go to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an upside down heart. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna make a really nice sized upside down heart. And then I'll come in and I will aura from the inside that heart. Now, for those of you who have been doing Zen Tangle for a while, there's a different tangle called vertigo that has a plant-like shape to it where it has um, stems or rather leaves moving off to the side and i used that as kind of a reference point for um, working with peacock here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come off here and create kind of a a pointy little leaf and i'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side and because i have more room i'm just going to give it a little bit more room. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. And I'll come over here and do it again. Now, once you start to get closer to that heart, we're gonna to wanna to get a little bit more movement in the leaves. So I'm gonna come up here a little bit and then I'm gonna let that line be a little bit longer and then I'm gonna sweep back in and pause, and then I'll come over here and I'll do the exact same thing. I think I might come from a little bit lower and I'll drop back in. So we're really looking for longer leaves up towards the top there. Now, to finish off that tangle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do these sweeping little flicks with my pen. 
This is something that I saw Molly doing at 1440. I went to go see Rick and Maria, and Molly taught a class. That's Rick and Maria's daughter, for those of you who don't know. Rick and Maria, uh, they come out to the 1440 here in Northern California and teach uh, once a year, and I just love to go and learn from them because then I can take it back and, and bring it to you and teach you things that I learned or that I thought were good little tips. So she used that nice little flicking of the pen to create these nice little hairs, as it were. And then if you want to, at the top here, you can go ahead and do like a little curly cue just to make it a little fun and happy. So I'm just gonna go back in here and add a little bit more depth towards that center line. You can see that that gives that a little bit more grounding and shows off the leaves a little bit more. Okay, so let's do that again. So I'm gonna turn my tile here, pull out just a little bit for you. So you can see I'm right in here and I'm going in the same direction. So you can see that that leaf was moving towards the, uh, the right, so we're gonna continue moving towards the right. So I'm right here and I'm gonna come up and out, auraing that line right there, right? And then I'll pause because I know that I need to make a little space for where the heart's gonna be. So I'm gonna make that upside down heart. And then I'll aura the inside of that heart. And now I'm going to go ahead and make those pointed leaves. So you can see that I'm just going up and then swinging right back down again, fairly close, yeah? And then once I get up towards the top, I want those longer leaves now. So we're almost thinking of like pine needles, as it were, even though it's peacock, I always think of pine needles when I'm, when I'm doing it. Now I'm gonna go back in between and I'm gonna do those flicks with the pen to get those little hairs of the peacock feather. And you can just see that I'm just being really easy about it. I'm not overthinking it. And I'll send some down into there. Maybe I'll come out here a little bit. So it really has a nice energy to it. I'll put a little curly cue on him and then I'm moving on. So if you would like to pause me here, this is a great place to pause and we're gonna finish these two on our own. Okay, so I've had a chance to go all the way around and I'm really happy with the way that those turned out. So I wanna zero in on Peacock just for a second here. I'm gonna zero in right on the heart and I'm gonna come into, you see how I've got this little lift right in here? I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add a little half moon right there in the center of Peacock. Yeah? And then what I'll do is I'll come in and I will add some lines into the center of that. And I think that that just gives it a little bit of depth. So you'll go around to each of your little hearts here and we're going to just do a little half moon and then some lines just to give that a little bit of depth and swinging around. Add that little half moon. This one's a little tight, but that's okay. Not all tangles are the same and that is just fine with me. And there you have it, okay? Now, I'm gonna pull this, oops, pull that out there. Sorry, everybody. That was probably a wobbly moment. <laughs> anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back in with our mono twin just for a second here. And I noticed that I forgot to tell you for vertigo, we're gonna fill in the circles there. So we're just gonna go in and fill in those circles on vertigo. So you see I'm just flipping around and 
getting that all cleaned up for vertigo. So one of the things that I was thinking about when I was doing this particular piece was, how can I ground this and make this so that it is not such a busy tangle? And I really do feel like the black really does give it the gravity that I'm looking for. You know, you have all these nice corresponding pieces that are just pulling it all together. So there you have it. We are gonna move on to color. So what I want you to start to do is I want you to think about what color you want your Ani flower to be, okay? In my original one, I decided to go with a really pretty blue. It just spoke to me. I think for this one, I'm going green. So uh, grab a color that speaks to you and I will see you in a minute. All right, so we are getting ready to do color. I'm so excited, you know it's my favorite part. Uh, so just for those of you who have never taken with me before, one of the things to note about your pencil that you're using, and I've got this really pretty kind of tealy, foresty green, is that your color pencil is three different colors. You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. It's all a matter of how much pressure you put on the pencil. So really, if you've got a, you know, a small pencil set, you really have a lot of colors there. It's just a matter of how you use them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna start with using light tension on the whole piece. And I'm coming in here, and you can see that my hand is really far back on the pencil. Can you see how far back I am? So I'm not here, I'm back here, and that gives me a lot more freedom to move that pencil around with that light motion. So I'm just getting in there and I'm laying down that color and I'm making that pencil work in a circular like motion. So I'll just go through and add that light color all the way around the Ani flower. And I'm gonna have you go ahead and do the very same thing. So this is where I'm gonna pause and I'll see you in a minute. Go all the way around your flower with that light tension. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around very lightly with that green, that pretty teal green color that I have. And I'm gonna continue using that pencil and we're gonna work with some shading aspects here. So you can see that there's this line right here. Behind that line, I wanna create a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna come in here with that medium tension now and I'm going to start to work in a circular-like motion with my pencil. You can see that I'm moving in a circle, right? If you do those jagged lines, you're gonna get jagged lines, but if you move in a circular-like motion, you're gonna get a nice smoky feel to your color pencils here. So I'm just swinging back about halfway through the top of this little loop, and then I'm gonna start to lighten up on my pencil to fade out. And you see how that kind of left that without a line of demarcation there? It gives it just a nice fade out and I'm not trying too hard to, um, to blend here. So now I'll come back in and now with harder tension or heavier tension, I'm gonna go ahead with that same pencil and I'm gonna start to create that deeper green in there. I'm moving in a circular like motion still. Once I've gotten halfway through there, I'm gonna start to lighten up because I wanna start to blend those colors. So I'm lightening up on my hand here as I move out and you can see that it starts to soften. See how, that, how pretty that is? That's really got a nice kind of tranquil feeling to it. And then I'm gonna come over to this line right here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just going in with that medium tension first and you'll see that I'm not gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna leave some light in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll come back in once I've got that medium tension going. I'll come back in with that heavier tension right in here, and I'm starting to press down on that pencil a little bit more so that I'm getting that nice darker color. I'm 
and it really gives it a gorgeous feeling. It's just really luscious and um, full. Like you can just see just by that one alone how differently that is. You know, a lot of people in the Zentangle world, they don't like to shade and that's just fine. I just find it a little two dimensional and that's why I think shading is so important. And especially with color, it can be really juicy and quite vibrant. Um, so that's why I teach the way I teach. All right, so the next line would be, I'm looking for this line right here. I'm gonna come in right there and do the exact same thing. So I'm going in with that medium tension. I'm doing that circular type motion. Moving my tile clockwise so that I can make it easier on my hand. And I'm coming about halfway up through here just with that medium tension. And now I'm gonna go in with that heavier tension. So there's the heavier tension right there. Now, I'm gonna come in and blend this out a little bit because I can see that there's a little line of demarcation in there. So that means I'm just lifting up my hand a little bit lighter and just circling back in here just to make it blend a little bit more. I'll come over here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did right there. Medium tension. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade that out a little bit and then I'm gonna go right back in there and do a little bit of heavier tension. And I'll fade it out just so that it really has a softness to it, yeah? Really nice. So I'm gonna go around the whole thing and do that very same thing. And I'm gonna ask you to do the same. So this is a great place to pause and uh, we'll pick it back up in a minute. Don't forget to breathe, soften in your shoulders, let go in your jaw and your eyebrows, and just enjoy coloring. It's such a soothing thing. All right, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and do that color technique with the piece and look at how much it popped. It just is jumping right off the page. I just love it. So we are gonna start to think about now the color that we wanna have in the center of our piece. So I am looking for a really nice contrasting color and I, I love using purple for a good contrast. So I have this really pretty kind of grapey purple color that I'm gonna be using for that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into the center here and I'm gonna start with that light tension that I'm often talking to you guys about. So I'm gonna come in with that really light tension. Notice how the pencil is moving in that circular-like motion. I'm starting to get that really soft, smoky feeling. And I'm creating a little bit of a gemstone in towards the center here. Notice I'm gonna leave that light right there. So I'm just moving through and creating a little bit of that softness in there. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna to start to use a little bit more uh, tension to create a little bit more depth in that purple. You can see that that's just coming right up and getting nice and smoky for me. And then finally I'll come in with that nice heavy tension. You can see that I'm using that circular-like motion. 
I'm not covering up a lot of the other stuff. I'm just laying back towards the side here and giving it that soft, smoky tension. Not losing too much of the other colors. We want to keep our mediums, we want to keep our lights because those are important to the piece, right? So, you know, you want to think about blending out and, you know, letting your hand get lighter in certain areas, but also letting it be darker in certain areas too, right? Now, one of the things that I've been seeing in uh, the gemstone classes is that sometimes they'll add two, three, four colors in their um, their gemstones, and that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. In fact, what I could do in here is I could take just a nice light red here and just use a little bit of that red as the medium color just to give it a little bit of interest if I wanted to. If you want to keep it more simple and easy, then just keep it simple and easy. One color is enough. You can see that I'm just trying to get that nice smoky feeling going in there. Gives it a really nice contrast. getting lighter and lighter as I get up towards the top because I don't want to lose too much of it. You can see I'm just working back over it over and over and over again just to give it a little bit of more blended feeling, you know? It's okay to keep moving around the piece. You can see that it gives it just a lovely feeling to it, yeah? So that's a really nice purpley purple. And I could even go in with a more contrasting purple right on that outside edge and give it a little bit more of that contrasting color. Don't be afraid to try with um, these contrasting colors because what you, what you will end up with is something that has just a lot of pickup, a lot of interest to it. Some of the time people are afraid to use contrasting colors and all their colors end up blending into one another. And it's really unfortunate that you lose all of that dimension. So don't be afraid to play here, right? There's a really great quote that I always tell my students. Art is about making mistakes and learning which ones to keep. So really give yourself that opportunity to figure out which ones do I want to keep here, okay? So I think that orb is pretty good. So go ahead and finish up your orb and, um, and I'll meet you on the other side. So hopefully you've had a chance to finish up your orb and uh, I'm gonna have you grab that white pen that you have. And you know, if you don't have the Signo pen, um, you may have one of those jelly roll pens. Those will work just fine in this situation. Um, but I wanna encourage you to try the Signos. Um, at another time if you get the opportunity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my white pen and I'm just gonna give this a little bit more interest. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna just add a nice curvature of my line with my pen here. And then I'm gonna add a couple of dots over here. And then I'll add a couple of dots over there and you can see that that just gave this a ton of dimension which is really what I was shooting for so those signo pens are just fantastic for adding dimension and trying things out so there you go if you want to play with your signo pen or your jelly roll pen or whatever white pen you have uh, some people like to use the Posca pens those are really great um, and I think there's one called deco that's a really great white pen as well um, you could check those out too. They all come in fine liners. Okay. All right. So take a moment, finish that up, and I'll see you in a minute. All right. So we're going to start to move into 
our verve, which is these guys right over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using two different colors. So for those of you who know me, you know that um, I talk a lot about colors that don't have a lot of viscosity. Viscosity is the body of the color or the pigment of the color. So if you have a yellow that you're working with, it's really hard to do a light, a medium, and a dark because it really just doesn't puncture through. It doesn't, it doesn't break in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit of red into that um, orangey yellow and that's going to give it a little bit more power okay so if you're working with a yellow or like a chartreuse green or a baby blue for the baby blue you may want to grab like a navy blue or the peacock blue if you're working with a yellow like this one you may want to grab an orange or a red just to give you a little bit of depth so I'm gonna turn this over here and I'm just gonna to start to lay down that color into our verve. And you can see that I'm going in with that really nice light tension and I'm just filling it in. You can see how far back I am on my pencil. I'm not being overly cautious with this. I'm just going in there and throwing down that color. And you can see that my pencil is moving in that circular-like motion. Here, look, slow motion, fast motion, slow motion, <laughs> fast motion. <laughs> so there, you can tell what I'm up to when I'm moving my pencil around. So once you've got that color in there, you can start to uh, use that same pencil and try to bring in a little bit of that medium tension. So I'm right here on this line. Can you see that right there? make that a little bit bigger for you. So you can see I'm right there on that line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go in with that medium tension and I'm going to go about to the halfway point and then right in here I'm going to pause and I'll do the same thing right here and I'll travel upwards towards that rounding but then I'll pause and just leave the light in the center here. Now, I'm gonna to start to use that contrasting color just to give it a little bit more depth. So here I am with that red, and I'm just lightly letting that red start to come in there and give it a little bit more shadow. And then as I go further up, notice that I'm really lightening up on my red so that it fades out. You see that? See how that faded out? Now down here, I'm gonna get a little bit heavier just to give it that depth. So see how that really kind of faded out nicely? Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So I've got that nice heavy tension started there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll fade off. And I sort of lost my light there, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that yellow back in there because I, I kind of lost it. So you can see that going from that dark to the light and then back into the darkness again really gives that a lot of power. Now I'm gonna come in right here on this line and I'm gonna do a little bit more of that shadow action. The reason for that is I want it to look like this flap is going over this flap. So I'm going in with that medium tension And right before I get to that rounded edge, I'm gonna stop. And I'll come back in and I'll do that area right there. Now notice I'm starting to lighten up. I'm starting to fade out, right? Now I'll come back over here and give this a little bit more depth if I can. So I'm really pressing down on that pencil, trying to get a little bit more of that tension. 
And isn't that so pretty? It, I just think that Verve is such a gorgeous tangle. I really love that. So there you have it. I'm gonna go around to all four of these and I'm gonna use that very same technique and I hope you'll do it too. Um, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with the Verve and, um, and work with it. So we are gonna move on to our peacock out here. And one of the things that I like to talk about with my students is I like to carry my color. And what that means is, is I'll take a color from in some other place in the piece and carry it somewhere else. So for the peacock, I'm going to carry that same color that I used internally on the Ani flower and bring it in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my piece so that it's on the diamond or the diagonal here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to just very lightly lay down that color inside of those um, pointy little leaves that we had earlier. And it doesn't really matter uh, what color you choose. It's always gonna come off like a peacock feather because there's so many different colors involved with a peacock feather. So if you wanna use like a purple or a blue or a green, it doesn't matter. And then I'll come back in and really close to the stem now, I'm gonna give this a little bit of extra tension to create a little bit more of that diversity and color. So I'm just going back in there and giving that a little bit more intensity. Let's see if I can blow that up for you there. Just like so. And just like so. And that's pretty nice and soft. I think that that looks really good. So I'm gonna go around to all of my leaves and I'm gonna do that in all of my leaves. Go ahead and do the same as well. Don't forget to breathe and relax. Okay, so I'm back and I've had a chance to go all the way around. So once again, talking about carrying color, bringing colors that are in other parts of the piece and using them. So this is the red that I used in here to give, get a little bit more depth. Uh, in that color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in around that peacock feather here and I'm just going in with a really nice light tension and I'm just gonna fill in around that internal area and then I'm gonna start to shade. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so you can see it. So I'm just gonna come in here with that medium tension right at the bottom. And I'm just gonna make it nice and juicy. That color needs to get a little bit more kick to it. So I'm just gonna get in there and get a little bit more kick by adding a little bit more tension to it. And then once I've added that, I'm going to do a little bit at the top of that particular piece, yeah? And then I'll go in and I'll add a little bit more heavy tension just right at the very, very bottom. And that's just gonna make that really come about. I just think that it needed a little bit of that pop factor. Now I'll grab that orange that I started with in here, and I'm gonna put that inside of the piece. Now you'll notice that I've got this white piece right here. I'm going to take that green that I originally started with and I'm going to bring it to the inside. So you can see that if you even had a really small set of pencils, it would really be easy for you to just stick with those. And I, I just tend to like to reuse those pieces over and over again. So you can see I'm just going back in and cleaning that up a little bit. And I'm gonna go all the way around my piece and really get those peacock uh, leaves to just pop, okay? So go around, do your pieces, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around. I am going to once again carry my color. 
So the color that I have in the center here is now going to be the background color for the piece. So I'm going to start with this lighter color right here. And I'm going to go ahead and lay it down nice and light. You can see that I'm not being overly careful around the peacock feathers and whatnot. I'm just going in and I'm lightly laying down that purple. I'm doing it in a nice circular motion so that that pencil is gonna be nice and smoky. It's not going to be really scratchy on the surface. <clears throat> so once I've had a chance to get into this little quadrant area, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a demo for shading and getting a really nice feeling of intensity with the color. So I'm just gonna finish up this little area right in here. And you can see that I'm really just throwing down that color. I'm not being overly perfectionistic about it. I'm just laying down that first layer of um, purple. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into these little crevices that I've got here, and I'm gonna start to press down a little bit more intensely with that purple. And you can see that that's giving me a really nice depth. All right, let me just make that a little bit bigger for you. So I'll come in over here and I'll add some of that intensity in here. Now notice that I'm fading out. I'm lifting up my pencil so I'm getting lighter tension as I go further out. And if I need to continue to make it a little bit darker, I'm making it a little bit darker in there. So I'm just getting into those little nooks and crannies and creating these kind of deep shadows, if you will. And then I lighten up as I move away from those deep nooks, All right? So that it's just kind of blending out. Now, once I've gotten in through there and in through here, I really wanted to give my first piece the feeling of a watercolor. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix some of my colors together so that it has the feeling of a watercolor. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Just getting that to blend out a little bit. So here you've got that really pretty purple blending out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find some of that red and I'm going to let that red start to show up in the background a little bit. And then what I'll start to do is I'll start to let some of that orange show up in the background as well. See how just by going in and going over a color, it starts to give it a more blended feeling, but it also starts to get a really nice watercolor feel to it. So you can see that I'm just rolling through there where the red was and adding some of that orange, and it just gives that so much more dimension and interest to that color. Now, if you have like a blue, you could do that with a green. If you have that with an orange, you could do it with a red. If you have um, a yellow, you could also do that with the orange. You just wanna make sure that the colors that you're choosing are complementary and that you're not gonna end up with a brown. So, you know, just think about it in terms of red with blue is gonna make more purple. And then if you think of it in terms of with a purple, you could use a darker blue to get a violet if you wanted to. So there's lots of different ways to go about doing that. So for me, what I just ended up doing was using a little bit of the colors that were present and, um, and blended them together. So if you have a green, you could use a yellow. Um, 
all different ways of looking at it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way around the piece here. So I'm gonna go into this and into this and into this and I'm gonna lay down that purple, okay? I'll see you in a minute. Remember to relax and enjoy this. It's not a tedious thing. This is where the Zen comes in. Let yourself just be fully immersed in the present moment, just enjoying what it is that you're doing. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it because it's not rocket science. You're just enjoying the colors. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and Boy, that watercolor effect really brought out something very interesting in this piece. I wasn't expecting it to turn out like this, but I'm really enjoying the process. So yeah, um, what we're gonna do now is we are going to come back into our Ani flower. And one of the things that I neglected to talk with you about earlier, as you can see inside my Ani flower, I've done a technique that I did in a couple of my other videos called wallpaper. And wallpaper is where you take the original color from your color pencil and you actually do a tangle within the tangle itself. And I like to use the same color pencil when I'm doing it. So I've got my original green um, pencil in my hand here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blow this up so you can really see what I'm up to here. Let's get it nice and close for you. As I'm gonna come in and we're gonna do printemps. Printemps is spring in French. And I know my French is horrible, so I'm sorry for my international friends that speak French. I really do apologize, but this is that, okay? So that's the name of the tangle, and um, I think it's spelled Prin Temps. Yep, so I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna to start to do that very tangle in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, and what I always say about um, doing this tangle is you wanna vary up your sizes. It's very important to vary up your sizes with this because if you just do a bunch the same size, it's not interesting for the eye itself. So you can see that I started with a really nice large one there, and now I'm gonna do a smaller one right next to it, and now I'll do a medium one over here. See how that's more interesting to the eye? If you just go in and do the same thing over and over again, it's not interesting for the eye, so we really wanna vary it up. So I'm just going in and I'm starting to add in those little pieces here. And you'll see when you go through and do the whole thing that it adds such an interesting element to the tangle itself. So go ahead and go into each one of your pieces and this will take a little while, so really just enjoy the movement of those swirls, okay? All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we've had a chance to get inside of uh, this beautiful tangle and put in a little bit of that wallpaper, which has really turned out to be quite beautiful. Blow that up for you. So there's one final element that we're gonna um, do. Actually, there's two final elements that we're gonna do. We're gonna come into these little um, uh, half moons and we're gonna add some of that orange into there, this piece right in here. Whatever your color was for Verve, you're gonna just put that into the half moon, just the inside of the half moon. And then on the outside of those, you'll put a little bit of the purple, um, just to, or whatever your background color, pardon me, whatever your background color was. So I'll go back in and I'll add some of that purple. And you'll notice that I'm gonna leave a little bit of light in that area. So you can see that I'm just leaving a little bit of white poking through and that gives that a sheen of light. Yep. So 
So we are really getting down towards the end here, which is a lot of fun, and I've had a lot of fun working on this with you. Um, so I'm gonna grab my white pen again. I'm just gonna make sure that it's ready to go. And inside of my little um, pieces here, my, my uh, peacock feathers, I'm just gonna add a white dot on the inside of those pieces. And you can see that I'm looking around for where to add them. So I just added those just to the inside of those pieces there. And I may go back in and just clean this up a little bit more to get a little bit more of that vibrant white and those dots to come through a little bit stronger, like so. So I will hope that you'll sign your piece. Most, um, most of my students do like to sign their pieces and what we're gonna do, whoops, is we're going to go in right into this hidden area right here and I'm gonna just put my initial, just to, to say that I've finished the piece and really enjoyed making it. And you know, this is really a time for you to meditate and to relax and to enjoy uh, just being instead of doing. So often we are out and about running around and each time I do a Zen Tangle, it's a captured memory of a time where I sat and I just took care of myself and used that time to just be still. So I hope that you enjoyed today's class. And if you are interested in uh, getting some tiles, you can always go to tangledyogi.com. We do have a store there where you can purchase the tiles. And I would love to, um, to see you guys there. And I hope that you'll share your work with me. You can always send me an email at tangledyogi.com. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, Tangled Yogi on either one of those. And I hope that we will see each other soon. So until we tangle again, have a great day.